Hi, uh, my name is Hunter Freeman, and I am working on a free open source IDE. It is written using .NET, C Sharp, and Blazor. If you want to see the source code, uh, there will be links in the description to all of the various repositories that you see, such as blazor.text.editor, Blazor Studio, and so on. And in this video specifically, I want to work on the text editor. I want to improve the functionality for iSemantic model. And one of the things that's on my mind is, well, currently, one is able to, in a file, uh, for example, this is a C program. I have an int main function. I then have a variable defi definition definition. Uh, it's being declared and assigned in uh, one statement. And then I use it uh, eight lines later in a printf statement. I hit F12 with my cursor uh, within that printf statement on the X argument, uh, the parameter. And F12 in Visual Studio is your go to definition keybind. So Let's see if it takes me to line eight in Blazor Studio, and it does. So given that there's this understanding of what the X parameter is that is being passed into this printf on line 16, I should be able to hover my mouse over the X uh, variable anywhere that it's being used and get a tooltip that tells me that X is an integer. So let me open up Visual Studio and show you uh, the equivalent thing that they do. So I have, for example, this field, uh, and it's just an arbitrary example for the tooltip. Uh, so the details aren't uh, what I'm focusing on here, but the field name is previous drag state wrap should display. I hover over it and I get this tooltip that tells me it's a field, it's a boolean, and it's in the class main layout. So this is one of the things that I'm hoping to do today. And I also wanted to showcase just kind of where things are currently for the semantic model as well, so that it makes sense. Uh, where I'm going. So I'm just going to get started here. Uh, I want to showcase some of the code for uh, the unit tests that do the lexing and the parsing. And beyond the unit tests, whenever I'm running this, um, I also have this dialogue uh, that is somewhat useful, I guess. Uh, I open it by clicking on the peak window display button and then it brings up sort of a peak window or watch window but that's sort of inaccurate because that would imply that it's like uh, updating faster than me having to close it and reopen it. Uh, you have to close it and reopen it currently to see the updated uh, data. So. I, for example, want to check out my text editor model, and perhaps I don't have a uh, debugger attached for whatever reason. Uh, then I can take a look at the fields of my text editor model or the properties using reflection. So, specifically, I could show you the iSemantic model. So that would be I have my text editor model for the main.c file. So I can go to fields and then find where it says private iSemantic model. I expand that. iSemantic model is an interface. So the concrete type, the implementation of it, is this class named semantic model C. So I can expand that. 
but what fields are on here uh, the way that I'm going about it currently is it has the text uh, it has a lexer to get the syntax tokens it has a parser which takes the syntax tokens and makes a tree data structure uh, and there's a compilation unit which I believe uh, given my current understanding of how compilers work which is quite limited I'm going at it in the mindset of I need a list of statements and that the list of statements is my compilation unit I'm not really certain uh, quite yet how to do it uh, exactly the right way but I'm just kind of iteratively figuring it out as I go so you'll see here my compilation unit is a list of statement nodes and if I expand this I have one statement node and currently this is kind of like um, not at all accurate because I have more than one statement in this file but I have to add the logic to the parser so that it understands that there's more going on here than just a variable assignment. I assume I parsed variable assignment so that I could do go to definition because I guess that's how I am identifying a variable having been declared. That doesn't really make sense uh, to say that when you assign something that something's being declared. But that's where I'm at currently. And let's see. The other detail. Okay, well, I suppose I'll just go uh, take a look at the unit tests very quickly. So if I go to Visual Studio. Let me just check my font size real quick, because um, it looks small. What is going on? It's possible that I just adjusted to how large I made the font yesterday, because uh, I really zoomed in for the video, and I might... Uh, not realize I'm still zoomed in because I just got accustomed to how zoomed in I was. So, let me just check my font size. I want to see the exact number. Okay, it's on it's on 24 with 165 percent scaling. I don't understand why this looks small to me. Uh, like I said, I think I'm just being accustomed to it because I never swapped back uh, so I'll go over to Blazor Studio and then the test cases for Blazor Studio I have a folder for basics semantic parsing and C so I can open up the lecture tests and I have a test that should lex numeric literal tokens. Well, I just have a hello world uh, C program. And I make an instance of Alexer and I give it the hello world program string content. She just int main and uh, this int x equals 42 printf. I suppose it's not actually a exact hello world program. Um, so when I construct my lexer, I create an instance of a string walker and I give the string walker my content. String walker is a class that I made 
so that I can have centralized all of my uh, parsing logic or lexing logic uh, because both both uh, lexers and parsers need to step through a string character by character so I have all of that logic um, parsers don't do I worded that wrong uh, I need to do this for the text editor lexers and other things so I'm sharing my string walker uh, data type let me just show you what it is um, so the string walker takes in your content and it keeps track of the position index that you're at as you're walking through the string character by character you can get your curt character which is a peak character zero your next is an invocation of the method peak character uh, being passed in one into the remaining text and this ju just just lets you go character by character and it'll give you the end of file character if you read out of the bounds which is just the null terminating character so when I make the constructor all that I'm doing is making an instance of my string walker and nothing else is done the, the lexing was not actually done by calling the constructor if I go back to the lexer tests and you see on the next line I do lexer dot lex uh, I'm invoking the lex method on my lexer instance that I had just made and what's inside of this lex method well while my string walker has not found the end of the file I do a switch statement on the current character so if I see a digit uh, such as the characters 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way up to 9 uh, inclusive then I consume it as a numeric literal and then I add to my syntax tokens a numeric literal token so I'll F12 to consume numeric literal and I first thing in this method is I track the character position index that the string walker entered the method at because I need to make a text span that has the starting index inclusive and the ending index exclusive as properties on it and then as long as the character that I'm looking at is a number I continue reading using string walker dot read character and then once I find a non uh, numeric character then I break out uh, this break here I make my text span because I kept track of the entry position index and then the current position index is the exclusive marker for the uh, text span that I return a new numeric literal token given the, the uh, text span so that's pretty much what I'm doing over and over again I have my consume numeric literal and for all the uh, letters I do a similar thing uh, underscore is counted with that because your fields in C sharp tend to be prefixed with an underscore so you'll see whenever I find those in my switch statement uh, then I consume it as an identifier or a keyword plus consume plus equals consume equals statement delimiter delimiter character uh, would be my semicolon so then I just make an instance of a statement delimiter token 
and then I add that to my syntax tokens. String literal start, consume a string. Comments, uh, preprocessor directive, library references, so like um, hashtag include standard lib uh, dot h, for example, would be that. And then the default, uh, I would just read on to the next character. And the last thing that I do is add an end of file token so that the final token in my list is an end of file token. So I go back to my lexer tests and we have here should lex numeric literal tokens. I believe I'm looking for this 42. And if I look at the logic here, after doing the lex, I uh, grab from the lexer's list of syntax tokens the singular syntax token which has a syntax kind of numeric literal token. So syntax kind, I'll F12 to it. I have my tokens, I have my nodes, um, my symbols, and variable. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how uh, correct compilers are written, but this is where I'm at so far. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I don't think it's perfect. Step by step, I guess. Um, so I can also get the text of a text span. Uh, I don't store the text because I don't want to create all these strings. So instead, every text span has a uh, method on it in which you can invoke named get text. You give it the original text and it returns to you a substring uh, as you ask for it. Uh, And then we can see here the text ends up being 42. And then I assert that it's uh, equal. So I'll put a breakpoint down here. And I'll delete all my breakpoints just to make sure I don't hit anything. And show in Test Explorer. Pull this up. Debug. Right. So we got the string. We got the lexer being constructed. We have the invocation of the lex method on the lexer. We then pull out a syntax token which has a syntax kind of numeric literal token. We say that there's only a single one of them. And then here we have it, numeric literal token. I get the text. It's 42. I assert that it's 42 uh, because that's the expected value and I hit a 5 and the test passes. So the next thing in here would be that I want to lex string literal tokens so this test specifically is going to look for the format string in this printf. And again, it's, it's the same program, same text, but I don't want my test cases to share any data. So even though these strings are equivalent, I'm storing it as a local variable within the method itself. I was thinking to myself that all of these uh, same valued strings would be interned. Uh, such that there's only one of them made and they all get a pointer to it because the strings are immutable. Uh, and 
I'm not sure if that's true though because I have a verbatim string and when you have the verbatim string you have a variable string based on the environment that you're running your program on it can be a uh, new line character for your line endings or it could be carriage return new line if you're on Windows so because of that my test cases for the text editor where I'll say at index 10 you'll find so-and-so it breaks if I run it on a different operating system because the verbatim string inserts a different line ending character. So I always replace the line endings with new line. So I get my lexer by using the constructor. I do lex invocation get the singular get the singular syntax token that is of syntax kind string literal token and I get the text and I make sure that it's equal to what I have here which is uh, I'm actually including the quotes I believe from what I can tell I'm not sure if that would be the right thing to go about or not, but I suppose that's a easy change in the future when I figure out whether I should include the quotes as part of a string's text value. Because you see here I'm uh, escaping quotes so I can include them in my assertion. Perhaps you would just want percent %d, um, uh, but that would be an easy change. Should Lex comment single line tokens uh, let's see, that would be this one right here, the C colon backslash users backslash uh, so on. We're going to want to lex that and then assert that the text is, is the same. So go ahead and do that and that's good. Next multi-line tokens. So we have a multi-line token that uses multiple lines, we have a multi-line token that uses one line. And I assert that both of those are equal. I want to grab the keyword tokens. So my uh, I have int and int. So that comes from the int main, this int part, and then int x, the int part. Uh, those two keywords should lex identifier tokens so that would be main and X uh, okay yeah so we have the function main that's being declared we have X being declared and then we have printf being invoked and then X being used. So there's four total identifiers that are being lexed here. Should lex plus tokens. So I changed up the text a little bit for this case in particular. Uh, I want to know if uh, 10 plus 32 instead of 42 is what I have here. And then it finds the uh, plus token. Preprocessor directive tokens. So that would be my hashtag include and standard lib.h. Uh, hashtag include standard io.h. I then assert that those are equal. Uh, and it's specifically the include keyword that this test is testing for. the library references so the previous test tested to see if I can identify the include keyword this test is testing to see if I can identify the actual library name itself 
So standard lib.h. I scroll down a bit. I do that assertion for standard lib.h and standard io.h. Lex to equals, all right? Statement delimiter, that's your semicolon. Uh, and that's, the, that's what I have in the lecture so far. Um, what about the parser? Okay. Uh, the parser tests don't seem to be asserting anything, but we can see here it says I want to find uh, if I can parse a numeric literal expression. Well, three is a numeric literal. And if I put my breakpoint and then find this in the uh, test explorer, give that a run. And my root is a compilation unit. Okay, right. I see how I done that, yeah. Because I had recently changed it so that I return a compilation unit instead of just the root node. Um, so that way I can have multiple statements in there. And in the parser, so how is the parser working? Let's take a look. Uh, that's why I have it written so far is you give it a collection of syntax tokens, you give it the source text, and there's a dictionary from string to variable so I can keep track of the variables like uh, the fact that you can uh, know that x is an integer or so on and the parse method returns a compilation unit the parse starts with a for loop I then make a variable out of the current token at the for loop's in, uh, integer value. The token index is at the class level because initially when I wrote this, I thought that I only needed to have a stack data type. Uh, so you'll see here on line 12, I have a stack of I syntax node. I thought that was enough. Um, I'm not sure at one point it was, but I needed to do a look ahead to see what was coming uh, beyond just using this stack. Uh, so for that reasoning, my token index is at a class level. So that way I can say I'm at token index two and it's not necessarily the case that you can just push myself onto the stack and the next token can decide what to do. I need to decide what to do given the next guy. Um, so that way I can do a look up into my index plus one into the collection of tokens and then make a decision on what this, the uh, meaning is behind. And I do a switch on the token, that syntax kind. So for the numeric literal token, parse numeric literal token, and I cast it. For the plus token, parse plus token, and that's just uh, a uh, pattern where I'm parsing the name of the token type uh, inside of that case for each one of these. Identifier token, well, parse identifier token is in there. So 
so there's um Emo Landworth uh, has a YouTube video series um, I need to be watching more of it uh, let's see But, uh, I suppose if I don't do something, uh, incorrectly first, it'll be hard to actually long-term learn these concepts unless I've, uh, gone through and tried to do a little bit of it myself, uh, as opposed to just, uh, doing nothing other than watch someone else do it. Um, I need to get my hands dirty a little bit and do things incorrectly so that I could learn from that uh, experience. So this is a uh, work in progress, I guess, the way that I have the C compiler written. So I'm not even sure if C compiler is the right word because I'm not going to make any assembly. Uh, I'm not going to convert C code to assembly or to object files or whatever. Um, all I need to do is do static analysis on a directory uh, of files in which it contains .c files. And then I can sort of make a, like I said, a semantic model of the C application in total by going through and lexing and parsing uh, those various C programs and finding the library references that they're referencing and make a semantic model for the text editor, not necessarily full-on compilation where I make a uh, object file and do linking and such, or if that's what the compiler does. but. Um, I'm taking it step by step, I guess. I just want to do static analysis of a C program uh, using these data types. So, let me go ahead and run the Blazor Studio again so I can get an idea of what I'm trying to get at here. Okay, so let me open up the peak window. And then I'll move things around so that we have some space. I make the peak window a little bit bigger, click on it, and I want to find my semantic model because I want to showcase what I'm currently lexing, and then perhaps I can improve the parsing so that there's more of a semantic understanding of the text itself beyond just the syntactic understanding that I currently uh, I'm using for the syntax highlighting and stuff. So here's my I semantic model, uh, the concrete type semantic model C, and I want to look at the lexer. The parser doesn't really have anything that it's doing yet. Um, the lexer as well doesn't have much, but it has more than the parser. So my lexer has a list of syntax tokens and if I look here, the first syntax token is a preprocessor directive token. Well, if I look at the file itself, there you go. Hashtag, in in hashtag include is a preprocessor directive. And then following that, we would expect to see a library reference token because I'm seeing standard lib.h. What do we see in here? Well, let me collapse the previous one. There it is, a library reference token. And then once again, uh, preprocessor 
and library. Preprocessor and library. Uh, we have a comment single line token. So I currently don't have any trivia. Uh, the fact that there was white space between line the end of line two and the start of line four was completely lost. Uh, I'm not I'm not keeping track of that trivia because we see here preprocessor library reference boom boom uh, preprocessor library re reference boom boom and then we have uh, two new line characters and then a comment and yet if I look at the lexer the lexer doesn't keep track of that white space. It just jumps right to the comment single line token. Moving on from there, we have the keyword token. Again, that trivia was, was skipped over. We have int. That, that's our keyword there. An identifier token, so that would be main right here. We have another keyword. So that would be int identifier token. That would be X. I'll just go through the remaining like uh, eight of them real quick so that you know where I'm currently at in the lexing. So equals token, equals token. Next one, numeric literal token. That's 42. Statement delimiter token. There's my semicolon. Comment multi-line token. Well, there it is. Next, another comment multi-line token. And there it is. We have an identifier token that's printf. We have a string literal token that's the hello world percent %d format string. We have another identifier token in which we are referencing the variable x. And we have a statement delimiter token, semicolon. Lastly, we have the end of the file token. And I want to show what I have in the parser, uh, just that there's an understanding of where things currently are. Dictionary type map. Oh, okay, yes. Um, so I guess the variable map is the more meaningful one here. It found two variables in the code that we're looking at currently. Uh, in the variable map, there exists two key value pairs. The first one being uh, the string text of main and then it maps to a variable of which I suppose there isn't really uh, any meaning to it because I just say that I just say that int type symbol is what main is but that's not true it's a function and then let's see what the other one is well the text X I'm saying that's a variable of type int and that makes more sense to me. Uh, I believe I only have implemented int type symbol. As well I'm not sure how symbol is used for people that uh, fully understand compilers, like the word symbol. Um, so. Let me see here. I think something that would be useful is to just work on the parser and in my mind think up what do I want the parser output to be? What is it currently? And to fix that, right? I want to parse this entire file. Uh, I would say, uh, a goal would be parse this entire file in the next hour and 20 minutes. Uh, that would be really great. So let's see. 
if I alt tab so I had to make sure that I read every single icon that showed up to make sure I didn't leak anything. It's just habit to alt tab. So I'm gonna go to uh, file settings preferences uh, font size I'm making the font size 16 so it's hopefully legible. Uh, I'll make it 18 entirely uh, okay so this file is right here And then I can close that. And put this on either side. All right. My include path uh, is not set up. So that's why they got the squigglies there. And settings. I'm making it 20. The font size that is. All right. So, I want to take a look at the parser. Uh, we have here a C program. So, perhaps I could say here desired result and then I would have the lexer and the parser the evaluator I assume I wouldn't use uh, the, there's also a binder that gets spoken about a lot um, I don't entirely know the purpose of it uh, once I do I'll add it in so that's what we have for now um, and when I lex this, I want to have the syntax tokens. So, like, what is my desired result? What do I have? What do I need to do to fix it? Uh, So, the syntax tokens is a, is a uh, flat list. It's not a tree structure. It's just a it's just a list. So I look at this. I look at this, and then I see hashtag include. So I would assume that I'm going to want a preprocessor directive token. The next is going to be my library reference token and then I have hashtag include standard io dot h so preprocessor directive token library reference token once again question that I have is do I want to track white space because I already failed to track white space if you look here it's the hashtag include standard lib dot h new line uh, and then the second preprocessor directive that we're seeing 
So should I track the new line? I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure. Um, that's what we're, I guess, trying to figure out right now. What is the desired result? Uh, and then what do we need to do to make it happen? So the next one after my standard io.h library reference is my single line comment. So I'll say comment single line token. And we have a keyword, uh, so that would be my int keyword, but then I'll, the token itself is just going to be a uh, keyword token, I believe. I would assume it's just a keyword token. For now, I'll ha have that uh, assumption in mind. Perhaps it's an int keyword token. We'll see where things go. So next up is main. That would be an identifier for a function. But in terms of Delexer, I believe you would just want to say, that's an identifier. Uh, and that's that. Uh, so I have an identifier token. I would then need to lex these parentheses. So then I could have an open parenthesis token and a close parenthesis token. I next have a I was going to say a the start of a code block but that doesn't make sense in terms of the lexer I think I think the lexer would look at this curly brace and just say it's a curly brace and then move on because uh, looking at this I want to say I'm starting my code block but I think that's the job of the parser so I'm just going to say this is a curly brace token curly brace token and specifically it's the opening curly brace so I'm gonna rename the two previous ones that I did uh, instead of open parenthesis token I want parenthesis open token instead of close parenthesis token I'll put parenthesis close token curly brace open token is what we're looking at right now and next up is a another keyword token we have this int for the x uh, that is to say, to say, to say uh, int for the data type of x And then we have x itself. Also, this is perfect because when I hover over this, it, this is exactly what I said at the start of the video. I want to have a tooltip where it says int x. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Um, but uh, returning focus to the task, we're going to say x is an identifier token. we have an equals token we have a numeric literal token we have a uh, I should show you where I am just in case there's uh, right here so this is what I'm highlighting it's going to be a multi uh, line token and I like to put uh, the grouping at the start so I'll say comment multi-line token and here we have another multi-line comment so we have another comment multi-line token here we have an identifier that would be an identifier token uh, that is to say the print f is an identifier open open parenthesis token 
which would be uh, if I word it uh, so that the grouping is at the front, then it would be parenthesis open token. And then I have my string literal. String literal token. That would be this hello world percent D. I have a I guess that would be a comma token, because uh, I'm looking at here, right? Uh, between the X and the string literal, I'll say that's a comma token, and then we have another identifier token. Uh, finishing off that function invocation is a parenthesis close token. We have a statement delimiter token, uh, which is a semicolon. I believe we had that earlier, and I and I missed it. So let's go back in a second. But let's add this one though. We have our statement delimiter token. And now let's just go back for a second. Uh, line eight here. This int x equals forty two semicolon. Uh, I had missed the statement delimiter token after that forty two. So we have our equal token. Numeric literal token, well that's equal token, numerical literal token. So my statement delimiter token would go uh, here as well. And I'm seeing after uh, this printf invocation is fully done, the statement, there's a curly brace close token. And this is my desired result for the lexer. Uh, if what I'm going to have in mind. Uh, so what would be the desired result for the parser? Let me open this file twice. Um, that wasn't what I thought it was going to do. How do you split this? Okay. So now I have it split so I can see my syntax tokens and I can see my parser desired result. And I can kind of formulate it uh, as I go through here. Okay. So parser desired results is going to be on the left syntax tokens uh, the desired result that is to say of the syntax tokens is on the right so we can kind of uh, figure out what we want the parsed result to be because one of the things that I was confused about was you write your lexer you write your parser and then you realize you can only have one root node and yet you have multiple statements how do you reason about that? Uh, Emil Landworth has, uh, I, th I think he's added the compilation unit and then he added statement node, uh, something on those lines. Uh, these are questions that I need to reason through, but that's what we're doing right now. So, um, state syntax token. If I were to ignoring the syntax tokens, look at main.c, the source code, the concept of saying that it is a compilation unit at the root makes sense. That's like the start of the file. And Inside of my compilation unit, I have a preprocessor statement. The preprocessor statement is made up of a preprocessor directive 
and a library reference. Uh, so let's see here. The compilation unit, I'm looking at it as though that's uh, main.c. My preprocessor statement is the entirety of line one. I am breaking down that preprocessor statement to be uh, the preprocessor directive, which is hashtag include, and then the library reference, which is uh, standard lib.h. So then we have ourselves um, node data types. We need to keep track of what node data types do we need to parse this file. So compilation unit. Uh, it's going to be a class that we have, and it inherits node, uh, syntax node. So what is syntax node? Uh, that's going to be our shared uh, data type, I would assume, so that we can have all of the objects in the same uh, tree collection. Otherwise, the, the types wouldn't match. They have to inherit from something that's common. So that's going to be our syntax node, is that common commonality that allows us to group them together into a tree. So I'll make an I syntax node because I don't expect an instance of that. I expect uh, someone to implement it and then make an instance of the implementation. So interface I syntax node. Um, I need beyond the compilation unit I need a statement node just a generalized concept of a statement because we see here I had written down when looking at the main.c file that there's a preprocessor statement uh, so Later on in the file for main.c, we also have variable assignment statements. So is that to say that we need this uh, overarching concept of a statement node in which all uh, statement-like types are deriving from? Is preprocessor statement its own kind of thing, or is it deriving from a statement node? Uh, I'm going to say statement node. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. Compilation unit. So a class statement node. Well, both the compilation unit and my statement node are implementing I statement node, so that we can uh, combine them all into the same tree, because they share a data type. Statement node. And then we have a specific implementation of a statement node. So what that would mean is we have another interface. So I don't want somebody to make a statement node. I want them to make an implementation of I statement node and give me an instance of that from what I can tell. Because we have this preprocessor statement. So perhaps it inherits something that can't actually be instantiated. Class preprocessor statement, I statement node. Uh, let's see. Processor statement node. I can scroll back up a bit. Preprocessor directive node. Uh, 
and then library reference node add the word node to the end of the preprocessor statement and then I gotta grab my preprocessor directive node which implements the interface I syntax node um, and then my library reference node does the same Coming as a child for the preprocessor directive node, I want a preprocessor directive token, which we have up here. Because I had heard that the tokens are the. Uh, I want to use where it leaves, but I feel like I'm like. Uh, disoriented right now uh, that they're the leaves of the tree right <laughs> um, they don't have any children they're the final child of a node so my preprocessor directive node it has a final child uh, in which it's a token and that ends the line And then I have my library reference token. And then at this point, I would uh, finish this statement entirely and then go on to the next preprocessor statement. That's kind of weird because I'm saying that the statement delimiter is a semicolon. Uh, do I make a special case for when I see a preprocessor uh, directive? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, but I'll just assume that that is going to work out right now. That it sees that that was the end of the statement. Let's make another one for hashtag include standardio.h. So let me mark these. Uh, we have the compilation unit. I'm thinking I'm thinking of that as main.c. Then we have a preprocessor statement node as a direct child to the compilation unit. Well that's just the first line of text. Uh, and that would be hashtag include standard lib.h. And then that's nice folding that I didn't even do anything other than tab it. Uh, anyhow. Uh, and then we have the second line, uh, which is again another uh, hashtag include statement, except this one's for standard io.h. And going even further than this, I could say, let's just go back to line one, uh, because I want to mark these various nodes with their corresponding text. Uh, so this hashtag include text on line one, uh, right here, is the preprocessor directive node and the preprocessor directive token, I suppose. Um, and then we have this angle break angle bracket standard lib dot h angle bracket. Well that could be the library reference node and the library reference token. And then I'll just do that really quickly for the second line. Preprocessor directive node is hashtag include 
preprocessor directive token is hashtag include. Angle bracket standard IO dot H is my library reference and my library reference token, my node and my token. Um, I don't like the idea of doing this because the indentation can change at any point, but I'm trying to align them so that it doesn't look like a, like a uh, complete mess. And then hopefully I don't spend the rest of my life uh, realigning these after I add more text, after I add more nodes because the alignment gets messed up. It also means I can't combine tabs and spaces because some people have tabs being four characters wide versus some other value. So I can only use spaces if I'm going to do something like this. Okay. I want to get it like this and then like that. So there you go. I missed the first one. So my compilation unit, in my head I'm mapping that mentally to the main.c file itself. My preprocessor statement node, mentally I'm mapping that to the hashtag include standard lib.h on line 1. Preprocessor directive node, I'm mapping that to the hashtag include, and then I want to have uh, that final uh, child, which is going to be a token instead of a node. Uh, so it looks kind of repetitive to have the node and then the token, and then in mentally I'm mapping them to the same text. Um, I need to figure out uh, the purpose of that. Perhaps you can't map the text hashtag include to a node without an underlying token. I'm not. Uh, taking it step by step. So my library reference, standard lib.h, and so on. So I have that. I want to break it down so that I only see the immediate children of the compilation unit unless it's something that I'm actively typing, unless I lose my mind. Um, whoa. Uh, hang on. Right, we're good? So we have those two preprocessor statement nodes, and then we have a single line comment. So if I were to group it as the first word, it would be comment single line comment single line node because you're building the tree and then the question would be are comments just trivia and don't belong in the um, in the parser so I have to look into that uh, let's continue though we have comment single line node. Well, I'm in my head. I'm mapping that text to everything that you see on line four. So and then the comment single line node would have the comment single line token underneath it. which again I'm mapping to the same kind of text. I do wonder if nodes don't map the text and that the only thing that truly can map the text is a token. Uh, because I, I just keep repeating myself. Um, I'm not sure the, diff the difference entirely. Let's see. 
so that one's done. I got my comment, single line node. I have a function declaration, I suppose, is what I would expect to see the parser put here. Um, so I guess let's do that. It would be function declaration node. Uh, it would take me a second to write out all of this on one line, like copy and paste it and then delete the new lines. I'm not going to do that, but I imagine it as all of this text. And we have a return type function function return type node. Uh, no, that's way too specific. Because I'll write it again real quick. What, what, initially, what I had just written was function return type node for this int. Because the, the first thing that I'm seeing here is int. And then I see main. So um, I think I remember from using Rosalind that the function identifiers were just an identifier. I'm trying to remember for sure or not, but I'm, I'm going to assume that all identifiers are identifiers and the context in which they're a child of tells you what they identify. So if an identifier is a child of a function declaration node, then that tells you that it's a function identifier. You don't need to make another type for the function identifier type. It's just an identifier and look at the parent. I think that's how it worked with Rosalind. Definitely don't quote me on that. We'll see where things go. Um, function declaration node. So in this, so in, instead of a re return type, uh, that's too sp specific. I feel like um, I think I would just want a keyword but then again why would you have this written as a keyword um, because this brings into the situation of the fact that uh, a lot of times primitive data types of a language are given keywords that map to data types but prior to the function identifier this int, uh, it doesn't have to be a keyword. It could be a uh, struct, I imagine. Uh, so I guess I would say that this is a data type, which identifier node for a data type and then I'll just say in here that the identifier is a has a keyword token inside of it so then it's maps to int uh, and then this breaks my previous thing, because uh, now I can't say simply, oh, that's an identifier node. Let me look at the parent, because I'm marking the data type as an identifier and the function name as an identifier. So that's not going to work out what I said previously. So see where that goes. Function. OK, sure, I'll add another layer here because I don't see how else it's going to work uh, because this is just, um, so I'll say function declaration node inside of that I'll say function return type node 
inside of that, we'll have an we'll have an identifier. Uh, which somehow has a keyword token instead of an identifier token. Somehow it can have either or. Uh, So I have my function declaration node. I have my function return type node, which is going to be that int. And then I'll have my function identifier node, which I'll say is containing an identifier token of the text main. Following that, I have my function arguments uh, node, I'll say. And this is empty. I'll say that I have a function body node. And the function body would be a list of statements, I'm assuming. And then how do you deal with the fact that there's also comments in here? Uh, so what I'll just say is uh, this function body node is going to have a variable declaration node, which is going to be the int x. Uh, because int x equals 42 is two statements uh, in one. It's the int x uh, declaration and the x equals 42 assignment. So I'll say I have the declaration node and the variable assignment node. And I'll get rid of what I just wrote there. I want to put here uh, the variable declaration node, like I said. I'm going to say that's in X. Uh, semicolon. So that would be a statement. Um, and then I'm going to say x equals 42 is another statement next one would be a comment uh, specifically a comment multi-line node And to back up a bit, um, the variable declaration node and the variable assignment node, like I said, I'm breaking int x equals 42 into two statements, um, but I never wrote the tokens, so let me do that. The variable declaration has the, again, this uh, combination of, I could use a keyword here if it's a primitive data type with a keyword associated with it, or I could use a data type literally. Uh, so that messes with my head. Uh, see where that goes. But I'll say 
it's a identifier token and that that text is int. Uh, I don't want my nodes to have the comment of the text because it just uh, I'll, uh, too much to read. It like just kind of stops making sense. It's almost like a node is uh, the concatenation of the text of all the tokens beneath it. Um, so variable declaration node. I have my int and my identifier. Uh, token for my x. And I don't like the fact that I'm using the identifier token for the data type and for the actual variable itself. Um, we continue and uh, we learn, I guess. We'll see what the mistake is later. Um, variable assignment node I have an identifier token that's going to be x. I have a equals token and I have a numeric literal token that's 42. Get rid of this text after the node. I have, uh, let's see, okay, so we're back to the comments. Uh, my comment multi-line node has a comment, is this trivia node? Uh, trivia node has a comment multi-line token. Yeah, so I'm going to say trivia node instead of comment multi-line node. Uh, and then the trivia node also has a comment multi-line token as a child. Which is, the text for it is uh, this multi-line comment. So I'm not gonna type that out because it would be a lot uh, to type. So next we have another trivia node and that trivia node has a multi-line token on it. Uh, this another multi-line comment. Print F would be an identifier, and it just happens to identify a function. But then what I parse this to say function invocation because of the fact that there's a parenthesis token after it. So then I think I would. Function invocation node which then contains a identifier token which maps to the printf text it has a parameters node And then that would be the string literal token. Oh, I just lucked out. I don't have to change the indentation of this hello world percent D format string. And then another parameters node uh, child would be the variable token. I guess it would be an, an identifier token and it happens to identify a variable.
I think that would be it. It's invocating, invocating, uh, invoking a function with the identifier of printf. Its parameters are broken down into two. There's the string literal token and the identifier token. And then that would be the f function declaration ending. Okay. Um, I don't want these videos to be uh, quantity over quality. I think this one was useful because it kind of lays out my current understanding of how compilers work and the fact that I don't understand them uh, as well as I would like to. And I need to l look at this further myself. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mess of me not knowing what's going on and then even further so being uh, having it harder to learn because I'm like stressed out about uh, being recorded so I'm gonna probably take a few days to watch uh, M.O. Landworth uh, and read other things and write up some code and see where I can get and then give an update on that as opposed to filming myself um, floundering uh, so that's it for this video thank you and goodbye